Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. And also, welcome back to the Linux Crash Course series here on the channel. The thing is, this series is the longest-running tutorial series in the history of the channel, but thankfully, you can watch these videos in any order, as each one is designed to be standalone. This time around, we arrive at the tree command. The thing is, the Linux file system can be quite complicated, and sometimes you just want to know, you know, the different relationships between the files, and the tree command makes it very easy to see that. It gives you a hierarchy, basically a tree view when it comes to your file system, and it can be incredibly useful. So let's dive in and check out the tree command right now. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is make sure that the tree command is available. And to check that, we could type command v. And then we could use the tree command as an argument. All we're doing right now is just making sure that we have the tree command available. So what I'll do is press enter, and in my case, I do. It shows me the path where the tree command can be found, which means that it is installed. Now if for some reason the tree command is not available, then all you should have to do is install it. For example, on Debian or Ubuntu, you can run sudo apt install tree, or if you're using another distribution such as Fedora, maybe something that uses the DNF package manager, then you can simply swap apt for DNF. Once you have the command available, then we'll start using it. Basically, all you need to do right now is make sure that you have the tree command available, and then we'll get started. And the basic usage of the tree command is really simple. What I'll do right now is enter tree just like that with no options or no arguments, and we're going to see what the output looks like. Now when I scroll up, you'll see that it shows the directories, and it also shows the contents of each directory within a tree, which is why it's called the tree command. As you can see, it shows files, directories, and so on. Now, just to give you an idea of the difference, if I run ls-l, just like this in my current working directory, then you can see that I have two directories and three files. Obviously, within the subdirectories, there's going to be additional files. For example, we see quite a few files in my logs backup directory. And also, I have some screen recordings in my screencast folder, as you can see right here. Now, there's nothing wrong with simply using ls to browse your file system, but when we enter tree, just like this, we see everything all at once. And when you enter the tree command with no options, it'll show you information that pertains to your current working directory. As you can see, I'm currently in my project folder, so if I enter the tree command with no options or arguments, then what it's going to do is show me the contents of my current working directory. And again, that's what you see right here. But already, you should see some value in the tree command. It makes it really obvious when it comes to the directory and file relationship in your file system, and it shows the contents in a tree view, hence the name. But as useful as those examples may be, this command becomes even more effective when we add options to the command to customize its behavior a bit. And what I'll do right now is show you some of the highlights. And the first of these is the dash s option. And what this is going to do is show you file sizes as well, which can be very helpful, especially when you're running into a situation when you are starting to run out of storage space. And when I scroll up here, it shows the file sizes as well. We see those right here. But in my opinion, those aren't the easiest to read. So what I'm going to do instead is swap the dash s option with dash h, and what that's going to do is give us human readable format. And you should see the difference right away. In this case, we see M for megabytes, K for kilobytes, and so on. In my opinion, it makes it a lot easier to understand the output when we use human readable file sizes. Of course, it's optional, but it's highly recommended. Continuing, something else to know about the tree command is that it's not going to show hidden files by default. If you're already familiar with the ls command, then you know you can add the dash a option to view hidden files as well. I'm going to combine that with the dash l option, and what that's going to do with the ls command is give us a long listing but also show hidden files. Hidden files are those that begin with a period, as you can see right here. Now, of course, with most commands on Linux, you're not going to see those files unless you use the dash a option, and the thing is, the tree command also has the dash a option available. 
As you can see, the tree command doesn't show hidden files by default either. We do have hidden files within this directory, but none of them are showing up right here. So what I'll do is just add the dash A option, and you'll see the hidden files as well. I have a backup of my .zsh folder, my vimrc, and so on, and you'll see that these files begin with a period and they're now being shown within the output. So just keep in mind that hidden files will not be shown by default, so if you want to see those, you'll need to add the dash A option. Now another option that might be helpful is to see only directories. If we add the dash D option, what that's going to do is instruct the tree command to show us only directories. And as you can see, it's only showing me the directories. I have 21 directories in my current working directory, as it shows there at the bottom. But if you wanted to exclude files from the results, this is how you do it. And of course, we can always combine options together. So for example, if I want to view human readable file sizes, but only see directories, I could combine those options together just like that. And as you can see, it's giving me file sizes, or in this case, directory sizes, along with the directories that's being shown here. And in this case, I'm viewing only directories, and I'm also seeing the size of those directories as well. Of course, we can always add a directory as an argument to the tree command. So for example, if I wanted to view the contents of the Etsy directory, then that's going to work as well. And of course, there's quite a bit inside this directory, as you can see. But I think this is more interesting than the original example because there's quite a few more files here. Going back to our previous example, what I'll do is add dash D just like that. And what this will do is show me only the directories that are contained within the Etsy directory. There's 513 directories within that directory, so you can see that there's quite a few. But sometimes it's helpful just to get a list of directories if you're not interested in files. Maybe you want to view the overall directory structure, and if that's what you want to do, then you'll use the dash D option. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I wanted to let you guys know about something really cool that I created recently. I put together the Ultimate Linux Commands Cheat Sheet, a downloadable PDF that covers all the essential Linux commands, as well as some great bash aliases, hardening tips, and other nuggets that I've picked up over the years. For just a $3 donation, it's yours, and it makes a great reference for those of you that work with a terminal. And while you're there, check out my other products at the shop as well. There's all kinds of Linux-themed products there. For example, t-shirts like the Dark Side of the Terminal, there's a classic Debian Swirl tee, and even a shirt to warn those around you that you're obsessed with Linux. Every purchase helps keep this channel going. There's a lot of cost involved with editing all the content for you guys, and it also helps justify the amount of caffeine that I go through while I edit these videos. As always, thank you guys so much for supporting Linux Learning. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. For another example, what I'm going to do is add the dash capital L option just like this. And when we use this option, we're going to give it a number. And effectively, what we're doing is we are limiting how many directories deep the tree command is allowed to show. You can also give it a path as an argument just like this. So what this command equates to is I want to use the tree command to view the contents of the Etsy directory, but I only want it to go two levels deep. So I'll press enter, and you'll see that the output is a bit cleaner. Since it's only going two directories deep, it's not going to show as many files. But the reason why you might want to use the dash capital L option is because maybe you're only interested in the first few layers of a directory, and you don't want to go too deep. If you're troubleshooting something that's closer to the current path than something that's further down, then the dash capital L option will enable you to do that. Now for the next example, what I'm going to do is show you the fact that you can also view permission strings as well. And for those of you that have already been using the ls command for a while, then you're used to using the dash L option, which gives you a long listing, but it also includes a permission string, which we see on the left hand side. Now I'm not going to go over permissions in this video since I already covered it in another video. But what I want to show you is that you can also view that information with the tree command as well. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to type tree and we're going to give it the dash P option for permissions. And what I'll do is point it to the Etsy directory and I'll press enter. And check this out. As we scroll through the output here, we not only see the files and directories that are contained within the Etsy directory, we also see the permission string for each as well. And this can be especially useful if you're troubleshooting permissions. Maybe you have a web server that can't access a log file, or an application that can't access a config file or something like that. 
You can actually use the tree command against a configuration directory, maybe something in Etsy or something further down within Etsy, and then view the permissions for everything all at once. So that way, if any of these permissions don't look right to you, then you'll know right away and you can go about changing them. Now obviously if you don't know how to update permissions on the Linux file system, I have a video that covers that. And if that's something you're interested in, I'll leave a card for that video right about here. Now the output might look a little bit cleaner if I don't use the Etsy directory as an example, since there's a lot going on there. So one more time, I'll enter tree-p, but this time I will not give it a directory, so it's going to run against my current working directory. And just like last time, you see all the permission information for each of the files that are contained right here. And also, when we combine the options together, some of the options that we've just gone over, the output becomes even more interesting. For example, you can type tree, and then dash H for human readable file sizes, P because you want to view permissions as well, we'll add A because you want to view hidden files, and when I press enter, you'll see what happens. Now we're seeing even more information. We're not only seeing the permission string, we're also seeing the file sizes, and since this is a tree view of the entire directory, we get an overview of everything contained right there in one shot. So this could be very useful if you're troubleshooting permissions, but not only that, maybe you want to see which files are using a lot of your storage. You can see the file sizes here, and you can check both at the same time. We also see hidden files here as well, and that's because I added dash A in addition to the other options. Continuing, there's another option that I want to go over before I close out this video. The tree command is very simple, and there's only a few options, but what I'm going to do is show you another helpful one. So what I'm going to do is type tree-f, and that's going to show us the full path. That'll make sense in just a moment. And again, I'm going to pick on the Etsy directory. Now, in this case, the output might be a little confusing because we're seeing the full path for each individual item. You could probably argue that you don't really need the full path. Obviously, we know this file right here is contained within this directory. And to see the difference, we'll take off the dash F option. And in my opinion, everything is easier to read. However, if you want to see the full path for each item, then what you'll do is add the dash F option just like this, and you'll see that. For some of you, this might be desired, but other people might not like this very much, but it is an option that some of you might prefer, so I figured I would cover it in this video. As you can see, we see the full path for each item right here, which can be helpful in some situations. Another option I wanted to mention is tree-x. Now in my case, the output will not look any different, and the reason why is because the dash x option causes the tree command to avoid other file systems. For example, let's say you have a backup folder mounted, maybe you have a backup directory on your NAS and you've mounted it on your local system. In this case, you might not want to see all the files contained on that file system. If you're only interested when it comes to the local files, then the dash X option is going to exclude anything that's not a part of the current file system. Now in my case, I don't have anything mounted to show you the difference. I'm using a virtual machine right now. But if you did have a use case where you wanted to only show the local file system and you did not want the tree command to follow through mounted file systems, then the dash X option is going to exclude anything that's not local. And sure, that's nothing major, but it might come in handy someday, especially when you get more into networking, mounting file systems, and things like that. If nothing else, just add the dash X option to your notes. It might come in handy someday. Anyway, the options that I've shown you in this video should be more than enough to get you started with the tree command. As you just saw, it's a very simple command, there's not all that much to it, but it is one of those things that might come in handy, especially when you're browsing a file system or troubleshooting files and permissions, storage sizes, and things like that. And there's our video. In this video, we checked out the tree command and I hope it helped you out. If it did, then be sure to click that like button. I would really appreciate that. Anyway, be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV if you haven't already done so, because there's all kinds of episodes coming out in this series and other videos as well. Anyway, thank you guys so much for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one.